The Colorado labor wars were a series of labor strikes in 1903 and 1904 in the U.S. state of Colorado, by gold and silver miners and middle workers represented by the Western Federation of Miners. Opposing the WFM were associations of mine owners and businessmen at each location, supported by the Colorado state government. The strikes were notable and controversial for the accompanying violence and the imposition of martial law by the Colorado National Guard, in order to put down the strikes. A nearly simultaneous strike in Colorado's northern and southern coal fields was also met with a military response by the Colorado National Guard. Colorado's most significant battles between labor and capital occurred primarily between miners and mine operators. In these battles the state government, with one exception, sided with the mine operators. Additional participants in Colorado's labor struggles have included the National Guard, often informally called militia, private contractors such as the Pinkertons, Baldwin of Felds, and Thiel detective agencies, and various labor entities, employers' organizations such as the Mine Owners Associations, and vigilante groups and employer-sponsored citizens groups, such as the Citizens Alliance. In 1880, miners represented 29% of Colorado's working population, declining to 13.7% in 1900. Colorado miners were divided into two groups, hard rock miners and coal miners. Following Colorado's gold rush, most of the easily worked place gold deposits were quickly exhausted. Miners turned to hard rock mining of gold and silver in Colorado's mountainous areas. Numerous mountain communities grew up next to the mines, towns such as Central City, Leadville, Telluride, Idaho Springs, and the Cripple Creek District. The Colorado labor wars took place at the precious metal mines and ore mills. During the same period, but considered separate from the Colorado labor wars, the United Mine Workers of America, attempting to organize the Colorado Northern and Southern Fields, called a strike in September 1903. The Colorado National Guard under Adjutant General Sherman Bell took the side of the mine owners against the miners. There were numerous productive hard rock mines in and around the Cripple Creek District in the mountains west of Colorado Springs. The Cripple Creek District was heavily working class. Many of the mine owners lived in Colorado Springs, on the plain to the east. Mine ore was refined in outlying areas around Colorado Springs, such as Colorado City. Colorado Springs and Cripple Creek were in El Paso County. The miners of the Cripple Creek district was entered domination of the county by the mine owners. In 1899, they succeeded in separating the mining areas from El Paso County by establishing Teller County. In late 1902, the Western Federation of Miners boasted 17,000 members in 100 locals. In January 1894, mine owners tried to lengthen the workday for Cripple Creek miners from 8 to 10 hours without raising pay. This action provoked a strike by the miners. In response, mine owners brought in strike breakers. The miners intimidated the strike breakers so the mine owners raised a private army of an estimated 1,200 armed men. The gunmen were deputized by El Paso County Sheriff F. M. Bowers, who the companies called upon to break the strike. The miners were also armed, and were prepared for confrontation. Governor Waite called out the state militia, to protect the gold miners and citizens of the district from the gunmen. After the threat of martial law, the mine owners agreed to disband their private army. The weight agreement on miners' hours and wages subsequently went into effect and lasted nearly a decade. Downtown Cripple Creek was destroyed by fires in 1896. Carpenters and other construction workers rushed to the area to rebuild the city, and unions arose to organize them. The Carpenters' Union and other unions owed the leverage to the Western Federation of Miners. The strike victory in 1894 provided the clout which empowered unionism throughout the district, enabling the WFM to build labor organizations at the district, state, and regional levels. Under the leadership of Ed Boyce, Cripple Creek unions also helped to organize, 
and provided leadership for the Western Labor Union, a federation formed in response to the American Federation of Labor which had federated the craft unions in the East. In 1899, the WFM wrote Industrial Unionism, its response to the AFL's craft philosophy, into its charter.